we have with us MP Gaurav Gogoi and we will be talking to him about the upcoming elections and everything that is coming along with the elections. So first of all, uh, Kruptang. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here, Kruptang. <laughs> so uh, what, how are the preparations going on? If I ask you about the Lok Sabha elections, it's uh, at the doorstep. And we have seen that uh, the campaigning, particularly the meetings with the public at the Jorhat constituency has already started. How is it going? No, the feedback has been phenomenal. Also because this election is uh, being held when the people of Assam are protesting against uh, the guidelines and the rules of the Citizenship Amendment Act being notified. Mm -hmm. And the way the government has responded by enforcing uh, strict police measures, restricting movement, mm -hmm. disallowing college students from participating in protests, I think there's a lot of angst and anger mm -hmm. Uh, in the autocratic authoritarian attitude of this government and therefore they have a lot of faith uh, on the Congress party. So you have chosen Jorhat, the party has given you the responsibility definitely. How do you see Jorhat as a constituency? Well as you rightly said the party has given me the responsibility of contesting from Jorhat. This particular Lok Sabha, the Congress party has lost the last two times in 2014 and in 19. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the way we are going to break that record. We are going to go for a historic victory. There's going to be a wave in our favor and we can already see the beginning of that. And I'm glad that um, it's a challenge that I'm happy to take up uh, on behalf of the party. And I'm glad for the support of the people that I'm already getting at this moment. Okay. And along with that, if we uh, see about the voters, they have had your father. Definitely there is a huge trust factor that is coming along with the Torun Gogoi's name. How is that going to benefit you as their representative to win the elections? Because no. there, are, there are things coming up from the chief minister where he has stated from people in BJP uh, like Jayanta Mollavarwa where they have stated that uh, you are going to lose with a huge margin of 3 lakhs. They have almost challenged it. How do you take it? Because you also have a strong connection with the Jorhat constituency. Exactly. So that's my answer to them. The numbers that are being quoted by the BJP are based on the results of the past two elections mm -hmm. and right now I have told you in the midst of uh, mm -hmm. in the midst of the autocratic rule of this government amongst high unemployment and mm -hmm. inflation mm -hmm. there's a lot of hope mm -hmm. and faith that the people of Assam have put on us and on the Congress party mm -hmm. and you cannot analyze you can't count mm -hmm. faith you can't you can't uh, express the love that people have shown in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. So they, let them be busy with the numbers and statistics of the past two elections and we continue to work to gain more affection and support uh, from the people of Assam and es essentially if I stick to the path followed by my late father, mm -hmm. I'm sure that people of Assam will support us even more in the weeks to come. Along with that, you have talked about CAA, there are other issues as well. Uh, so we have seen you speaking very uh, strongly in the assembly regarding the Manipur, condition in Manipur way, while we have seen that there were a lot of, uh, it, it also went very viral on the social media regarding your speech and everybody was very happy about the stand you took. Do you think that the member of parliament, those people who are being elected to the assembly, they're, they're to the center, they're, they're not taking the issues as seriously as it should be taken up? Well, if I say from the perspective of the Jorhat Lok Sabha, yes, I can say that. Mm -hmm. Because there are many issues related to the central government, particularly to the Jorhat Lok Sabha, mm -hmm. which are not being taken up. Okay. Now, one is the slow pace of the highway construction mm -hmm. along a particular stretch known as the Tiok Shipsagar section. Second is that we have one of the largest, the largest river, Island Majuli, yes. which is suffering from the problem of erosion. erosion. Mm -hmm. And erosion has not got the attention uh, from this government since 2014. Mm -hmm. Both these two issues are vital mm -hmm. and they have just not been heard uh, inside the parliament. In fact, it is I who have spoken on flood and erosion and it is I mm -hmm. who have taken up the issue of the Jorhat Highway, mm -hmm. even though I'm not a member of parliament uh, mm -hmm. from Jorhat. Mm -hmm. But it is only because the BJP are not taking these issues seriously 
that uh, I have been forced to take issues which are not from my particular constituency. Mm -hmm. But going forward, I've told the people that once we win Jorhat Lok Sabha, uh, issues of Jorhat Lok Sabha, the hopes and aspirations of this particular Lok Sabha will be heard in the parliament. But there is uh, quite some erosion being seen in the Congress as well. In recently, we have seen a few senior leaders have uh, tried to point on the leadership, current leadership of Hupen Bora as a president. You have a lot of responsibility as well for your party. So how do you see it? How do you see the current leadership of Congress? And what do you have to say on the erosion that is being witnessed that a few leaders have now moved to BJP? In fact, we, if we see that BJP is entirely built of Congress. Well, um there are two aspects to it. I think the BJP always looks at the headline and they try to manage the headlines. Mm -hmm. The minute Congress party gets positive attention from the public and from the mainstream e media, the BJP try to divert the headlines. Now, immediately after Rahul Gandhi's very popular uh, Bharat Joro Nyaya Yatra in Assam, they try to divert the headlines by poaching a few people from the Congress party. Mm -hmm. This obviously everybody knows that one or two individuals departure does not impact any party, mm -hmm. let alone the Congress party. Mm -hmm. Again, if we see at the national level, the entire country is worried about electoral bonds. Mm -hmm. And why is the BJP passed such a law, which is obviously unconstitutional, and why agencies like income tax and ED are being used to harass companies, and then money is being extorted by them by the BJP and, and, and what I've been consistently saying that I have joined politics uh, not to become rich or wealthy or to own a tea estate or a tea resort or own a media channel. I, if I wanted to do that, I could have done that when my father was in power for 15 years, but I choose not to do so. I have come in into politics for social work and that's the kind of politics I believe in. But again, uh, along with that, it comes about uh, the thing about Parivar Wad. Ki they keep, uh, keep on saying about uh, Rahul Gandhi and Sonia Gandhi, again Torun Gogoi and Gaurav Gogoi. But you have already stated that it's about how much you are carrying for from the other person, from the father, from the mother. Uh, in, in the case that you have given example of, it is completely a different uh, scenario. What do you have to say on it? Well, there's Paribar Vad in Assam also. There's only one particular political family which is getting richer and richer and richer and richer. There's one particular political family in the BJP who are owning tea estates, who are owning media channels, who are owning news portals, who are owning private schools, and, and God knows what other business they will get into. And this political family is getting patronage by the union home minister and by the prime minister. So I don't know from what aspect are they talking about Parivarvad? I hope that they will clarify in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wrong boy boy.